I'll tell you what, nobody can make an interesting conversation boring quite like a theist. If you and I sat down and the opening salvo of the conversation was something like, where did the universe come from? I would be excited. You know, what a fascinating topic, right? We could talk about the Big Bang and we could talk about dark energy and the expansion of the universe and multiverse theories and the nature of time. And we'd ponder what exactly we mean by the word nothing. You know, we talk about the simulation hypothesis, get crazy esoteric, start digging into solipsism. And in the end, we'd both walk away from a really interesting conversation, still not knowing where the universe came from. In my mind, that is the single most interesting topic for academic discussion. In order to really ponder it, you have to delve so much into all this different weird shit about you know, fourth dimensional shit and quantum fluctuations and the nature of time. Virtually every aspect of the conversation can lead you down into another spellbinding rabbit hole of theoretical physics. Now look, I'll be the first to admit, I'm nowhere near qualified for that conversation. I get lost in a hurry when physicists start talking about time, but I enjoy trying to keep up with them, even if it's hopeless. I just love... You know, thinking about this shit, I love the vain feeling that someday I'm going to be able to comprehend some tiny kernel of what the fuck is going on around me. Hell, I've paid hundreds of dollars and driven for hours to listen to professors expound on theories of universal origins and the nature of time. I honestly can't think of any topic I'd be more excited to discuss unless, of course, the person I'm talking to is religious. Because nothing sucks all the fun out of the unknown like an undereducated asshat who wants to replace I don't know with I have this magic friend, you know. If a Christian started a conversation with me by asking where I thought the universe came from, I would roll my eyes, I would sigh, and I would tell him it was fashioned from the flatulence of Frank the Farting Space Chicken or something, because there is no chance in hell that that conversation is going to be any fun. I learned that the hard way, of course. At one point in my life, I was convinced that maybe if I just talked to these Christians about the origins of space and time, perhaps I could infect them with a bit of my curiosity and wonder. Maybe I could get them thinking about things from a new direction, and maybe, just maybe, I could make them wonder if Space Wizard is really the best answer. Maybe I could help them realize that the incomplete scientific answer has way more explanatory power than the theistic dead end, and maybe I could help them understand that the most rewarding mental state is curiosity, not certainty. And over and over again, I'd get a good run and start confident that this time Lucy was going to let me kick the damn ball, but inevitably I'd wind up on my back asking why the fuck I thought it was going to be any different this time. Now, I, I want to be clear here because I'm not saying that a conversation like that is useless. I'm just saying it's no fucking fun. You know, if you've got the patience for it and you can handle the fallacies and bastardizations of logic all the way through to the bitter and seemingly futile end, you've almost certainly done a good thing. You've probably chipped away at their certainty a bit. At the very least, the right answer is like floating around in their memories somewhere now, something. So it's important that atheists are willing to engage Christians in these discussions. But when you do, it's a fucking chore and you deserve a hug and a cookie when it's over. You know, think about that. We're talking about one of my favorite topics and I don't care what your level of knowledge is. You know, like I've talked to PhD physicists about this and I've talked to my nieces and nephews about it. Whether I'm in the role of the teacher or the student, I find the conversation endlessly interesting and yet simply by introducing a heavy dose of Jesus think, you can turn it from intriguing to intolerable. This profound lack of curiosity annoys me more than any other religious trait. You know, don't get me wrong. The part where they murder gay people and throw acid at rape victims, that's way worse. And so is the part where they chop up people's genitals and blow themselves up on trains and, and where, where, where they stand in the way of medical research and education and the psychologically torturing children by telling them they're going to go to hell if they beat off that part, too. That's all worse. You know, there's no question that a lot of what they do is way worse for society, way worse for the people around them and way worse for their own mental well-being. But at least to some degree, all of that is rooted in this same willingness to walk through life, satiating your thirst for knowledge with holy water. And that's why I don't buy into this whole notion of the harmless Christian. I get that shit all the time that we should focus our show more narrowly so that we don't alienate the harmless theists. We should focus on the fundamentalists and the zealots, but we should also extend an olive branch to these so-called harmless Christians. Well, show me one of these harmless Christians and maybe I'll back off of them. I mean, honestly, all the problems in our world from great to small, every challenge that faces us individually or as a community of 7 billion can only go one of two ways. Either we're going to solve it through a rigorous application of human ingenuity or we're not going to solve it. So how can it possibly be harmless to pretend to certainty in the light of mystery? In order to make this global society work, we need to know shit. And in order to know shit, you have to start by admitting that you don't know it yet. You know, this false certainty that's a prerequisite to get into their club. It's baked right into the definition. The very act of being religious is a false application of certainty to the unknown. 
when you strip away all the pomp and circumstance, that's what being religious means. It means pretending to know the unknowable. And in practice, it's pretending to know the unknowable with the most unlikely possible answer on all the most important topics. So tell me, how could that ever be harmless?